Welcome to this Tuesday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry, and it's a pleasure to have you with us. Between the pages, tourism takes the spotlight. We highlight the measures being taken to prevent the spread of COVID-19 within the sector. Stay with us. This is the show with information you need to know, and it begins now. You've asked for it, and now it's here. The Jamaica Information Service has updated its mobile app. It's easier to navigate, loads even faster than before, talking about top speed, operates seamlessly across platforms, and we're a creative bunch, so it's much easier on the eyes. Now you have quick and easy access to new stories, television and radio features, and a variety of photos right at your fingertips. And you'll get push notifications when new content is uploaded. Download the app on your Apple and Android devices now and get news you can use. Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica on the go. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, July 7. The Ministry of Justice will be appointing three more Court of Appeal judges this year. Portfolio Minister Delroy Chuck says this is to assist with the case backlog in the court. So we expect that in 2021 there could be a doubling up of the number of cases that will be dealt with in the Court of Appeal. Minister Chuck says the same strategy will be used in the parish courts and it's expected that those matters will be dealt with within a two-year period. He was speaking recently as the Ministry of Justice presented the courts with $85 million worth of audiovisual equipment funded by the European Union. Some bail hearings and case mention dates will soon be facilitated through the Ministry of Justice's mobile bus. The Ministry will be equipping two justice buses with audiovisual technology to facilitate this. To the extent that these two buses can be provided on a regular basis to the jail or police station where the audio equipment may not be there, or to 100 Man Station, or to St. Catherine District Prison, or to Tower Street. Uh, penal institution, then these buses could be used, Chief, for those persons who are applying for bail. The minister says this move will cut additional spending from both the ministries of justice and national security. Communities will continue to benefit from the crime intervention and prevention strategies of the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, even though it has come to an end. The program, which was in operation for the past 19 years, ended this March. Acting Chief Technical Director in the Ministry of National Security, Shauna Trowers, says members of targeted communities will still be able to access services provided by the CSJP through the relevant ministries, departments and agencies of government. Like restorative justice. Um, child diversion, the victim support unit that comes under the Ministry of Justice. We, um, in terms of labor and social security, we would have to look at vulnerability. So we look at the social programs such as PATH and other support programs. In, we have the Ministry of Health because it's important for us to have prenatal care, neonatal, all of that which we know affects persons' development. And so those would be the cadre, of course, and I could not forget the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Ms. Trowers was speaking recently at a JIS think tank. CSJP3 program manager Orville Simmons says the initiative has made a difference in the lives of many young people in the 17 to 29 age group. According to Mr. Simmons, 25,000 persons benefited from programs under CSJP 1 and 2. Under CSJP 3, 800 young people benefited from tuition support, 2,000 from skills training, 1,000 from remedial education programs, and 1,500 from internships, of which 1,000 were permanently employed. In addition, CSJP 3 has engaged approximately 650 parents. The National Parenting Support Commission and they will continue to um, provide parenting services to communities. And CSJP, you know, um, just recently, for example, supported them to purchase a bus that will, you know, improve the access to parenting services um, by taking um, parenting trainers into communities. And the National Council on Drug Abuse, NCDA, that again we had capacity strengthening for that organization and they will continue to provide services. 
CSJP operates out of the Ministry of National Security as part of its social intervention initiative, mainly in Kingston and St. Andrew, St. James and St. Catherine. Small farmers in St. Thomas are poised to gain access to over 400 acres of former sugarcane lands in the parish. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, J.C. Hutchinson, says the lands will be made available by the sugar company of Jamaica, SCJ Holdings Limited. The All-Island Cane Farmers Association will manage the distribution. We are looking now to move certain lands from sugarcane into cash crops. The small farmers are the ones who will be getting the benefit out of all of this. Minister Hutchinson was speaking on Friday as he distributed farm lots at Plant and Garden River. The area is being set up as the island's third agroeconomic zone, equipped with agro-processing facilities. Effective January 2021, all cattle will be required to have tags and corresponding passports. Minister J.C. Hutchinson made the announcement during his sectoral presentation in Parliament last Wednesday. All cattle owners therefore now have six months to access the pre-year tags and passport for each head of cattle. And we are urging them all to get those tags now. Tag your animals so we can trace them and keep them out of the hands of the pre -DLT. He says over the coming weeks, the ministry will be engaging with its health and wellness counterpart to collaborate with the Public Health Inspectorate in strengthening compliance with the regulations and to ensure that no cattle meat is sold without the requisite checks and balances. This will be done through the Veterinary Services Division. And finally, the government and entertainment stakeholders are scheduled to meet on Thursday to devise plans for the reopening of the industry. The COVID-19 pandemic hit the local entertainment industry, halting social events which led to the closing of venues. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says discussions for the reopening of the industry involve key players. These include promoters, sound system operators and theatre creatives. Thursday, we met with the entertainment sector here at the ministry to look at how we will deal with the possible reopening of the entertainment sector. We discussed at length what are the options that are available for the government to consider. Those meetings were very, very successful and we will continue those discussions. Minister Mackenzie was speaking at a press briefing on Sunday. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. Up next, a recap of happenings out of the office of the Prime Minister during the past week. Take a look. Greenwich Town declared a zone of special security and community development operation. Home delivered under Hope Social Housing Intervention and 50 keys handed over to new homeowners at Silverson Estates in St. Catherine. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. Last week, Monday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave an update on government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Among the new developments is the easing of curfew restrictions, which are now in place from 11 p.m. each night to 5 a.m. the following day. The new curfew took effect at 11 p.m. on June 30 and will expire at 5 a.m. on July 31. Meanwhile, gatherings in public spaces have increased from 10 to 20 persons. Up to July 14, markets and vending areas will be given an additional hour. They can open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays, but must close on Sundays. While water parks and attractions remain closed, zoos and parks will open for a 14-day period. Zoos will open between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., while parks will operate from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Measures related to the wearing of masks, as well as those which govern access to infirmaries, hospitals, nursing homes and correctional institutions, will remain unchanged up to July 31, 2020. While addressing the June 29 virtual press briefing, Prime Minister Holness urged the Jamaicans to maintain their vigilance against COVID-19. The pandemic is not over, as you would see in countries that are close to us, that their numbers are rising significantly and uh, it is 
you know, aside from the good management that we have given to the pandemic, but a lot has to do with your own personal responsibility and your faithfulness and consistency in observing the measures. On July 1, the Prime Minister declared a Zone of Special Security and Community Development Operation, or ZOZO, in Greenwich Town. Mr. Holness says the community, which falls within the St. Andrew South Police Division, has the highest number of murders and shootings among all police divisions, despite the presence of a state of public emergency operating in the area. An analysis of the situation in the Greenwich Town area has revealed that the community continues to be characterized by increased gang-related violence and criminal activities as the gangs compete for area dominance and overall the intervention in the space will be geared at the urgent need to save lives and setting the conditions for and the delivery of effective social interventions to reduce social vulnerability to violence and crime. I'm using this platform to encourage all our construction partners that if you have a project that you have decided you are not going to proceed with, I would urge you that now is the time to proceed with your projects. Prime Minister Andrew Holness's rallying call to private sector entities as he issued 50 keys to new homeowners at Silverson Estates in Innswood St. Catherine Wednesday. The cut in our revenues, the cut in growth, technically yes, we are in a recession, but it doesn't have to be a long-lasting recession if we as private individuals who make our investment decisions make the decisions now to invest. Now is the time to invest for us to swiftly recover and recover stronger together. The 1,200 two-bedroom unit development is being constructed by West Indies Home Contractors Limited under the National Housing Trust's Guaranteed Purchaser Program. The Prime Minister reiterated his call for continued investment on the island during Thursday's opening of the newest Island Grill restaurant location. If you are a businessman, you are an investor, you are into construction or you wanted to open a restaurant like this one, now is the time to do it. If you want to avoid a dim and pessimistic future, then you have to act in a positive and optimistic way. So, if you don't invest, then there will be a recession. The $100 million investment is located in downtown Kingston. Mr. Holness hopped over to St. Mary on Thursday to deliver an upgraded dwelling under the social housing component of the HOPE program. Three sisters received three attached two-bedroom units with bathrooms and other amenities. The multifamily home was built at a cost of $22.6 million. Mr. Holness says government will be employing several models to deliver houses to the most vulnerable in society. These, he says, will include taking over a tenement yard and replacing the houses with improved facilities. The person living here doesn't have the boots or the straps. They are not an NHT contributor. Many of them are not working. They don't have any income. They would not have a chance to go and purchase a home on the open market. So the government has to put in place programs that will help them to improve the conditions. On Monday, Mr. Holness expressed a shock and sadness at the unexpected passing of Superintendent Leon Clunis. Superintendent Clunis died at hospital two weeks out of a violent clash with gunmen in St. Catherine. And on Wednesday, Mr. Holness sent condolences to the family of legendary West Indies cricketer Sir Everton Weeks. He was 95 years old. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us again next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. 
If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five hours of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. Ahead of the phased reopening of the tourism industry, workers and stakeholders were engaged in sensitization sessions on the best practices that govern the dispensation of duties. This is within the scope of a new normal. Watch. Hello everyone. To ensure a safe return to your respective jobs, the Ministry and its partners have created this training video to assist you with familiarizing yourselves with the health protocols that you must observe in order to work during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It is in our collective best interest to learn and practice the steps outlined in the following video. The SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, more commonly known as COVID-19, is a highly contagious respiratory disease that spreads when an infected person releases droplets by coughing, sneezing, talking, or laughing. These droplets can infect a person's lungs by entering areas such as their eyes, nose, or mouth. Persons can also contract the disease by touching surfaces that have been contaminated by infected droplets. Now let's do a quick recap. True or false? COVID-19 is highly contagious. True. How can an infected person release infected droplets? An infected person releases droplets by coughing, sneezing, talking, and laughing. How can contaminated droplets infect a person directly? By entering their eyes, mouth, or nose. Did you get everything right? If you did, great job! If not, don't worry. You can always go over it again. Time to do road. Now it's time to get to work. But before you head out, check to ensure you've got all your personal safety items, like your mask, hand sanitizer, and your uniform. That's right, instead of wearing your uniform straight from home, pack it in a bag and change into it when you get to work. As you leave home and begin your journey, always wear your mask properly not on your head or under your chin or just over your mouth. It should cover your nose and mouth. If it's a reusable cloth mask, wash it each day. If you're using a disposable mask, replace and properly discard your old mask after each use by placing it in tissue or paper towel and placing it in the garbage. While awaiting your transportation, see to it that you always maintain a social distance of at least six feet apart from others to reduce your chances of being infected. Here's something to help you remember. Play it smart, stay six feet apart. Once inside the bus or taxi, continue to keep your distance as best as possible and avoid touching any surfaces. If you do happen to touch a surface, refrain from touching your face and sanitize your hands immediately. Time to recap. Complete the following. Play it smart. Stay six feet apart. 
Now, wasn't that easy to remember? Okay, next question. How often should you wash your cloth mask? Every day. What areas should you ensure are covered when wearing a mask? Your mouth and nose. Awesome! Now let's move on to the next section. Back on the job, back on the clock. And we're back at work. Feels good, right? Now, wash your hands, then change out of your casual clothes and into your uniform, then wash your hands again. In fact, you should wash your hands frequently throughout the day and for no less than 20 seconds with soap and water. If you are using a hand sanitizer in between washing, count for 40 seconds or sing happy birthday twice to yourself. Make it fun, especially before or after eating, touching your eyes, nose or mouth, using the restroom, sneezing or blowing your nose. And whenever you're in a shared space, wearing a mask is a must. It should be correctly worn and securely tied on to cover your nose and mouth. Continue to practice social distancing. Maintain a minimum of six feet between you and the person closest to you. Avoid congregating in close groups. Be vigilant and stay within the designated social distancing markings. Your work area and tools should also be sanitized regularly. Remember, the coronavirus can exist on surfaces, so it's important to keep your surroundings, equipment, and areas where guests frequently touch clean throughout the day. Your supervisor will provide the materials and equipment you need to clean, sanitize, and disinfect, and of course, instruct when and where these should be done. The requirements will depend on where you work. Be especially careful to listen to what your supervisor is saying. Let's recap. How long should you wash your hands for? 20 seconds. Where should you sanitize regularly? Your workspace and areas that guests frequently touch. Okay, last question on this topic. You ready? What is the minimum distance required when practicing social distancing? Six feet apart. Time to check out. As you prepare to head home, take off your uniform and travel home in your casual clothes. Put on your mask correctly so that it covers your mouth and nose. And check to ensure you've got your personal sanitizer. After clocking out of work for the day, sanitize your hands before you leave the property. You must practice the same safety precautions you did when you were leaving home for work. While you wait on transportation, continue to avoid touching surfaces and practice social distancing. Remember, play it smart, keep six feet apart. When you finally make it back home, shower immediately, change into clean clothes, and pack away the clothes you just took off. If the mask you were wearing was disposable, discard it immediately by gently removing the mask, placing it in a tissue or paper towel, and placing it in the garbage. If the mask is reusable, wash it each day when you get home to help keep it virus-free. And just like when you got to work, when you are home, wash your hands as often as possible for 20 seconds using soap and water. Remember, Always use soap and water, and always for 20 seconds before or after, eating, touching your eyes, nose, or mouth, using the restroom, sneezing, or blowing your nose. Let's go over the steps again for a safe journey home. What should you do with your uniform before leaving work? Take off your uniform and travel home in your casual clothes. How should you discard your disposable mask? by gently removing the mask, placing it in a tissue or paper towel, and placing it in the garbage. What should you always use when washing your hands? Soap and water. Remember, the goal is to keep everyone safe and healthy. So play your part. Feeling sick? Stay home. Do you know what the symptoms of COVID-19 are? The most common symptoms to look out for are fever, a dry cough, and feeling tired. Other symptoms include aches and pains all over your body and experiencing what we call shot of breath. If you feel like you're experiencing any of these, it's in everyone's best interest that you seek medical attention immediately. Always contact your doctor by phone first and explain your symptoms. Wait for instructions. 
If the instructions are that you should stay home, tanayayad, unless of course you have a chronic illness, such as diabetes, hypertension, asthma, or sickle cell. It's not the time to power through and go to work. No, stay home. Drink plenty of fluids paired with nutritious food and rest up. If you're living with family, also protect them by staying isolated in a section of the house away from them. To protect your colleagues, fellow Jamaicans, and guests from also contracting your illness, just stay home until otherwise advised. Let's review what you just learned. What are some of the symptoms of COVID-19? A fever, dry cough, aches and pains, or shortness of breath. Instead of going directly to the doctor when you feel ill, you should call first. If the doctor advises you to stay home, what should you do? Tanayayad. Say it one more time. If you're sick, Tanayayad. And that was our last topic. Thank you all for viewing. Let's keep these lessons in mind and play our part in keeping our industry safe and healthy. want to be treated if you are diagnosed with COVID-19. Not like this. Them will talk home wicked and be fit dead and they behave like I am the one that created the virus. All my friends as well that were positive, them going through even worse than what I'm going through. Persons are calling police on them as well. Do not allow your fear of COVID-19 to rob you of your humanity. There is no need to shun or victimize persons with the disease or those on the front line. To mistreat persons that do have it, it's not a good feeling. We don't cause this on ourselves. We really need to cut the hate and work together as a country, as communities to overcome. Let us be understanding with those affected and support each other. Be kind. End the stigma. The show has come to an end, but only on your television screen. You can join us online on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube for more features on a variety of issues. Then, again tomorrow at this same time on this same station, we'll have more updates for you. Until then, I'm Theodore Henry. Stay safe, stay healthy. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.